All right, I'm going to analyze this video here. Okay, uh, just to show you that there is a constant attack on the Word of God. And people that have no wisdom are teaching things that they know nothing about. All right, and I'm going to show some more evidence of this. This is crucial. This is important because it's not rocket science. It's real simple, but these people are making money selling these this uh, this idea of a zombie period on earth and it's never going to happen all right so i got to a minute 28 of this and i thought you know i got to talk about this because this is incredible stuff that the links that people are going to is amazing uh people with a lot of money teaching uh things where they have no wisdom at all so let's start here. So far it looks pretty cool. heliocentric model of the earth, huh? Okay, so there's the first mistake. Well, this might be the second mistake, but there is nothing in the book of Revelation, anything, in, there's nothing in the Bible at all that suggests Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere at all. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, you go to Luke, um, Luke um, chapter 1, verse 33. It says that he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. His kingdom doesn't have an end. It has no period. He's from everlasting. Okay, let's go. There's another mistake. See that? I don't know what this is. It almost looks like the Bible, doesn't it? But it's not Revelations, is it? It's the book of Revelation. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. The Revelation of St. Of, uh, John the Divine. It's not Revelations. I don't know what kind of goofy version this is. I've never seen it. It looks, you know, old, doesn't it? Is that even English? I don't know, but it, it's not a big deal. It, but it's just, you know, we see the word Revelations twice, and it's in uh, 2 Corinthians 12. That's the only time the word revelations is used in the Bible. It's never used in the book of Revelation. Not a big deal, but, you know, I've just never seen this before. End Times documentary. Like, they got a special insight to the end times that's not found in the Bible at all. And I just want to share this verse with you. Knowing this first, know this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. All right, you get, it, that's important to understand. It's important to know. And look, you don't need Bible college to understand what the Bible says. All you need is faith. And the Bible is there for the very simplest of us of all of us 
if you can read it, you can understand it. It doesn't matter how dumb you are. Believe me, if it mattered how dumb you were, I wouldn't understand nothing. All right. This is interesting, isn't it? Huh? I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it. Introduces the glorious reign of Christ on this earth. No, it doesn't. Chapter twenty introduces the glorious reign of Christ on this earth, which is known as the millennium. Okay, so Revelation twenty actually, here. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at it. It talks about believers reigning with Christ and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years this is not Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years like I said he reigns forever all right this is mentioned twice here in the Revelation 20 uh, I just showed you this verse they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years and in verse 6 they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years we are priests of Christ and of God right now just like what we read in first Peter chapter 2 but ye are chosen generation a royal priesthood you are a royal priesthood right now now let's uh, take the mystery out of the term millennium it is uh, the mystery this guy's got secret insight and he wants your money a Latin word which is made up of two words it means a thousand years I, you can you don't have to look at the Latin to understand what a thousand years means this is simple stuff this is not rocket science you don't need foreign languages to tell you what an English word means. The words mille, which means oh, a thousand. Oh, for dog's sakes, man. I'm going to break this word down. It's nobody's has. I don't believe anybody's has ever been confused about this word. But go ahead. Break it down anyway. And the word annum, which means years. Mille annum, a thousand years. So the word millennium means a thousand years. No kidding. And the text of Revelation chapter 20 is the only place in the Bible where that actual word appears and it appears in the text six different times if you look down in your Bibles you will notice in verse 2 it says he laid hold of the all right let's see first of all let's point these out because I don't know if he's gonna quote from a goofy a goofy uh, Bible version or not oops what I do wrong Oh, I know what I did wrong. The word millennium is not there. Hold on a second. What did he say? If you hear it appears, and it appears in the text, sit place in the Bible where... And the text of Revelation chapter 20 is the only place in the Bible where that actual word appears. And it appears... What, 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 what actual word? I mean, he, he got it. He went into this big thing. Am I missing something here? He goes into the big thing about the definition of millennium. Mill millennium. Millennium. Let's just do it. Let's do that. <clears throat> no. Huh. He breaks down. No, that's not it. He breaks down the word millennium right unbelievable well mill means this and e means that and enonym means this and it turns out that word's not even in the bible huh crying out loud now let's uh take the mystery out of the term millennium it is let's take the mystery out of it uh, let's take the mystery out of a word that's not even in the bible all right a latin word which is made up of two words 
The words mille, which mean a thousand. Here, let me show you a Latin word in the Bible. There's a Latin word right there. And the word annum, which means years. Mille annum, a thousand years. So the word millennium means a thousand years. And the text of Revelation chapter 20 is the only place in the Bible where that actual word... That actual word... That actual word is not found in the Bible anywhere. All right, it's not there, man. Come on. You just went into this big thing about the meaning of the word millennium. It's not even there, man. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's, it, he would be right if he said the word thousand was mentioned six times in the book of Revelation. In the text. And, and does anybody have any question what the word thousand means? It's not rocket science, man. If you know English at all, thousand is pretty simple to understand. You don't need to. Thou means this, and sand that means when you put these together. Six different times. Six. If you look down in Ooh. your Bibles, you will know. Well, I wouldn't know that if you wouldn't have told me. In verse 2, it says. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. I thought you said the word millennium was in there, man. Years for a millennium. Verse 3. And the nations no more were deceived for a thousand years. A millennium. Verse 4. And they lived and wait, reigned with Christ. Wait, wait a second. Right there. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Now what's he say? And the nations no more were deceived for a thousand years. What do you say? And the nations no more were deceived. <clears throat> this is not a big deal. But it actually says that he talking about the dragon, which is the devil and Satan, that he should deceive the nations no more. And all that means, and it's told exactly what this means, is that when he's deceiving the nations, he's gathering them together. So when he's loosed, he gathers them together. That's what this means here in verse 3. That he should not deceive them anymore. He shall not deceive them to gather, to gather them together against God's people. So that that's in the context of what is what it means, and that's what it's being told. The Bible explains itself uh, very simply. It should be easy to understand, but when you're trying to look for something else, you're not going to understand what is plainly written all right so this being sealed up shut up and put chain up put a chain on them a great chain uh, this is just simply preventing him from gathering together the unsaved people so when he's loosed he gathers them together that's the context that's the meaning and the purpose of this uh, being, uh, you know, cast into the bottles, or, you know, yeah, cast in the bottles, but, you know, it, just like I said, to, to be, to be, uh, to be chained up. Okay, let's go. And the nations no more were deceived for a thousand years, a millennium. Verse four. It, it just, just so, um, just to shine some light on this, this this is not a zombie period. Okay, and this is really if we really look at it, this is what they 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 want to teach is this idea that there's going to be a period of time when unsaved people are going to live among saved people, 
just as it is right now except the difference is we are going to be resurrected into our glorified incorruptible bodies meanwhile there are going to be zombies living among us all right i mean there's really there's just no way to get around it it's a zombie reign a zombie period and um it, it doesn't make any sense it's not going to happen but that's if they're being honest about what they're teaching that's exactly what's going on here four and they lived and reigned with christ a thousand that's what we're doing right now isn't it so from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return this is the thousand years we are living and reigning with Christ right now now if you're not living and reigning with Christ how can you say that you're saved seriously well Christ don't reign in your life right now that's a problem buddy that's a problem that's a big problem a thousand years a millennium Verse 5, and the rest of the dead did not live again. Until the thousand years were finished, just like what we read in Daniel. Uh, talking about the end of the world, right? It's them that sleep. What What is that verse? Imagine if I could remember something. All right, and it says here, talking about the end of the world, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is... Uh, so essentially a parallel to what we're reading in Matthew 24 when the angels gather together his elect we are lifted up and like what we read in 1st Thessalonians 4 16 17 18 when we are lifted up first the dead in Christ and then those of us which are alive and remain are lifted up with them to be with the Lord this is the rapture the resurrection we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump it's the end of the world and we shall awake to everlasting life at the end of the thousand years at the end of the thousand years is the end of the world we are lifted up Satan is loosed and he gathers together the unsaved and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all all right Again, until the thousand years was finished there it is again verse 6 over such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and, and you are priest of God right now I just showed you you are a royal priesthood reign with him we are called to preach the gospel to every creature we are preachers we are priests a millennium a thousand years mille annum a thousand uh, a thousand my life come on years verse 7 now when the thousand years had expired Satan will be released from his prison the millennium is a period of 1,000 years that is going to take place in the future and no no it's not it's happening right now and you didn't use the Bible to make that point did you you just went right outside you just went through the Bible and then went beyond the Bible is a very important subject for yeah, us. <laughs> I agree. And you better not get it wrong. And buddy, you're getting it wrong. To discuss. Now I need to tell you that there is no more subject in all of Bible prophecy that is more controversial than this one. Well, I, I don't know about that. Um, wh what I will say is that overwhelming majority of people are getting it wrong and this just it's further evidence that we are in the end time and all the secret to understanding it is to believe the Bible you hold in your hands to so believe these are the words from God to you believe these words they are the Word of God You know what I'm saying? It's it's about faith. It's always been about faith, right? We go to I think it's Hebrews 11. Noah became heir of the world by faith. Noah, being warned of God of things not as 
not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It's always been about faith. If you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, how can you say you have any faith at all? Buggy, buggy, woogie, buggy, buggy, woogie. He, yeah. No, that's right. So, what, what the hell is that? You, you got kidney gardeners preaching what the Bible says, man. I, I can't, I can't talk, man. I screw up my words all the time too. But that, this is silly. All right, Jesus Christ will physically, physically return to this earth. He will defeat his enemies and there will be a battle that is fought. Wait a second. Him defeating the enemy is the battle. Alright, so when he returns, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, behold, he cometh with clouds. We are lifted up in the air with him and the enemy is gathered at our feet. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. Oh, that's the battle. Of course, it's not really much of a battle, is it? It's not two different battles, though. Keep that in mind. And there will be a battle that is fought. Well, I don't know if you could say it's being fought. Is there any mention here of the enemy fighting back? They ain't got no chance, sucker. And then he will set up his kingdom on this earth. And he will reign upon it for a thousand. So that's not in the Bible at all. That's not even suggested. There's nothing you can point to in the Bible that even remotely suggests this idea that he will defeat the enemy and then come down on earth and reign for a thousand years. That it's, it's actually completely contrary to the Bible. His kingdom, there is no end. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. He is from everlasting. What's going to happen? I mean, this is so stupid. What's going to happen when he stops reigning at the end of the thousand years? You want to talk about that? Tell me what happens when Jesus Christ stops reigning. Because I think he would be interested to hear about this too. I really do. Buggy, buggy, woogie. Not seven years. That's not. That's not in the Bible. Yeah, this, this. When I see something like this, this is how I know somebody is getting this information from somebody else. All right, because this is not in the Bible anywhere at all. This, the timeline, the seven years here. You're getting it from the Old Testament. Now, what you're doing, you're without saying it, you're calling the Messiah the Antichrist, the Messiah of Daniel. You're calling him the Antichrist. The Messiah in Daniel is Jesus Christ. All right, so I don't want to get into that because uh, I've talked about it before. If you have any questions, please do ask. It's not rocket science, but the Messiah. It's real simple. The Messiah in the Book of Daniel is Jesus. Christ. All right. So this is another thing. So if you if you break this down and and think about it, you've got the rapture. You got Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. You've got um, the saved people being lifted up in the air, and so you got seven years. Apparently where there are unsaved people still living and this is not true this is why this is as wicked as the theory of evolution alright because you're teaching preaching 
to unsaved people that they can wait until after the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the air to be saved. And that's absolutely not true at all. When Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. Now, what these guys are saying, there's going to be seven years of nothing, apparently. I don't know what the hell that even means. Seriously. And then you got, what, a thousand years of uh, zombies, man. Because, look, you just admit it, man. You've got unsaved people living during this time. What are they? Unsaved? What are they? What are they? Uh, zombies? I mean, what do you got? And then you got saved people getting killed? People that are resurrected? People that are changed at the twinkling of an eye into their glorified, incorruptible bodies? They're in the bodies that will never perish, and then they're getting killed by unsaved people, getting their heads cut off? Walking around with no heads? What's going on here? I mean, just talk about it, really. Explain yourself. Elaborate on this. It's it's a zombie period, man. Just admit it. Time is running out for who? For you? You you're just you just made a timeline that said if you're not saved, you can wait until the end of the th you can wait until Jesus comes and then you still got a thousand and seven years to get saved don't get saved today just wait until after he comes and that's what some people do I've, I've had him come to me just I'm just gonna wait until I see Jesus come before I believe in him I want to see it for sure that's the only one it's kind of like Thomas except different right look and look so this this idea is just it's insane man it's wicked If this is a, a period of perfect peace, you're out of your mind. Absolutely out of your mind. Out of your cotton picking mind. And there, look, let's do it this way. Here, thousand years of peace. Where's that at? Huh? Can you show me? It's not there. Well, I got that right. He's coming soon. Whether he comes in your lifetime or after you die, you can rest assured he's coming. Guarantee it. Boogie. Boogie woogie. To reward his saints with everlasting life. That's the reward. But if you believe in him right now, you have already in you everlasting life. He abides in you and you abide in him. You are born of the Spirit of God. You are a new creature and you shall never die. The second death has no power over you. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. You are a priest of God. You are a royal priesthood. The second death has no power over you right now. Right now, you are a priest of God and of Christ. Right now, you reign with Him. And the thousand years is a unique time period because when He comes in the clouds of heaven, the thousand years are over. And right here, verse 11 is parallel to Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. 
when he comes in the clouds of heaven. That's what this is a parallel to. Buggy, buggy, buggy. Is that it? Show's over, fellas. Alright. And they'll be back to deceive you more later. I'm sure of it. This is ridiculous. Um, I just, the thing is, I just wish people would be honest about what they believe. Hey, talk about what happens when Jesus Christ stops reigning. That, that would be probably the first question that I would like answered. When you say Jesus Christ reigns for a thousand years, I want to know what happens when Jesus Christ is done reigning. When his kingdom comes to an end. I want you to explain that part. And I, like I said, I think Jesus would be curious to know too, wouldn't he? Huh? I mean, if I was Jesus and you were telling me that I'm going to stop reigning one day, I'd like to, boy, I'd be awful curious. And then, and then this other part about this thousand years of peace, where, where's that at? Where are you getting that at? People are getting their heads chopped off. Where are you getting that at? I'm not seeing that anywhere. And what's going on? Why, why a thousand? If you're going to say, and just be honest about what you believe. If you're going to say there are, there are not unsaved people after the return of Jesus, What's the point of a thousand and seven years, right? What's the point? This is making no sense. So you have to say that there are, a th you know, there are unsaved people. You really have no choice. You painted yourself into this corner. You can't get out, so you just stop talking about it. And look, it's typical, right? Let's go a little bit further. There we go. So you got. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, what's going to happen after that? you got unsaved people and saved people living. And that's what's happening right now. But this is happening until the harvest. And the harvest is when the wheat is separated from the tares. And the tares are thrown into the fire. And the, you know, the wheat are, are gathered up. Alright, so... It's very simple, all throughout the Bible, very consistent. But when you throw this poop in, excuse my language, all right, when you throw this crap in, it doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, I tell you what it does, it, it'll it make movies for you. You'll be able to write books and, and uh, make a lot of money, but it's not true. It's not true. You got Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, just like we read in Daniel 12. Um, them that sleep, some shall awake to everlasting life, and some to everlasting contempt. All right, some are some are raised to incorruptible, and then the others are destroyed forever. And, and so, what's this here? What's the point of this, man? I talk about it. Just, I mean, you're you're telling it. Explain it. Let's go further with this. Carry that thought out, man, and apply it to the scripture. And there's only one possible conclusion you can draw, and that is you're going to have a thousand years or a thousand and seven years of zombies. That's the only way. Man, it just, and that's the only way you can come up with this. And just be honest about it. If that's what you believe, just preach it. Stand on the mountaintops, on the rooftops, and just preach it. Zombies, thousand years. Here we go.